On behalf of the university, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you to this congregation for the conferment of degrees here in our Barony Hall. It is a very special day in the university calendar. It's a graduation day which makes it a day of celebration for our graduates, for all the family, friends and supporters and for all the staff in the university. And I can't think of a better venue in which to start the celebration. In the United States, they refer to these events as commencement ceremonies, as they use them to signify the commencement or the beginning of a new journey, as opposed to an ending. And it's in this spirit that we also wish to celebrate graduations at Strathclyde. Now, in a few moments, it will be my privilege to cap each of our graduates as their name is called out and they come up on stage to receive their award. The capping tradition has its roots in ancient China and it's recognised as a rite of passage and as a mark of achievement. And for each of our graduates once capped, this also signifies that they are now part of a community of scholars at the University of Strathclyde that can stretch back over 200 years to the Scottish Enlightenment, so they'll be in very good company. At the start of this afternoon's ceremony, we have the conferment of an honorary degree and these are awards that are made by the university to recognise the particular contributions that someone has made during their career. And we'll hear a little bit about those contributions in a short while. In the meantime, I do hope that you enjoy the ceremony. And when you see a loved one come up on stage to receive their award, I would strongly encourage you to celebrate. We've got this hall all to ourselves. And these occasions only come round once in a lifetime. So please make the most of it. I now formally declare that this congregation for the conferment of degrees is open and I invite Professor Tariq Janani of the Department of Electronic and Electrical Engineering to present our honorary graduate to receive his award. Thank you. Vice Principal, I have the honor to present Professor Jose Manuel Fonseca Mura, the Philip and Marsha Dowd University Professor at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, USA. Legendary inventor, distinguished academic, and eminent engineer, Jose Mura, a truly Renaissance man, has made prolific contributions to numerous aspects of science, engineering, and technology. Jose Mura is a world leader in signal processing theory and practice. I will give a few vignettes of his wide-ranging contributions. In the 1990s, he addressed the challenge of detecting bits in ultra-high-density magnetic recordings. With his, and with his student Kafkit, he developed the fundamental theory of noise in ultra-high-density magnetic recordings and then devised an optimal detector that could adapt to different noise levels conditions. Their two patterns revolutionized the high-density magnetic recording industry, dominated by channel chip manufacturers such as Marvel, IBM, Hitachi, LSI, Toshiba, and Infineon. The Mura Kafkik patented technology was adopted by chip developers worldwide. The patterns are now employed in some 3 billion plus hard disk drives in over 60% of all computers sold worldwide in the last 13 years. In February 2016, Carnegie Mellon settled the infringement of these two patterns with the chip manufacturer Marvel Semiconductors for the eye-watering sum of 750 million dollars. This is the largest intellectual property set pattern settlement ever in the world in information technology. Professor Mura co-founded Springland in 2009, which offers technology to automatically generate platform-tuned code that creates performance-critical software for signal processing for a large list of applications including data compression algorithms, fast image forming algorithms arising in synthetic aperture radar or in MRI or CAT scanners and software defined radio. The company has many industry clients and its automatically generated codes have been part of technology leading awards. 
They have included the 2006 Gordon Bell Peak Performance Award and the 2010 High Performance Computing Challenge Award. In addition, two of Jose Mura's patents in segmentation of medical images are jointly owned by Siemens, and the technology has been incorporated in Siemens MRI machines. Professor Mura's patent on a novel TV broadcasting power amplifier adaptive pre-distorter was cited by 27 patents of companies ranging from Harris Corporation to wireline and wireless infrastructure providers such as PMC Sierra, Alcatel, Lucent, Ericsson, Nokia, Raytheon, Huawei, Hitachi, Motorola, and RF and microwave product manufacturers such as RM Micro Devices, Andrea LLC, Atheros, Scientific Atlantic. In his 1995 video patents were cited by at least 80, 80 patents from over 20 video networking and internet space companies, including Google, Philips, Mitsubishi, Microsoft, Sharp, IBM, Cisco, Honeywell, HP, Samsung, amongst others. Born in Biera, Mozambique, Professor Mura studied for his electrical engineering degree at the Instituto Superior Tecnico, the Technical University in Lisbon, Portugal, and his MSc and DSc degrees in electrical engineering and computer science at MIT. After early work in Lisbon, he moved to the US, where he was appointed professor of electrical and computer engineering at Carnegie Mellon University in 1986, and to his current endowed chair, the Philip L. and Marsha Dowd University Professor in 2013. Professor Moura is the architect of the Carnegie Mellon University Portugal program, which has revolutionized ICT education and research in Portugal, a joint venture between the government of Portugal and Carnegie Mellon University the program was established in 2006, which involves most of the key universities in Portugal. The Carnegie Mellon University Portugal program has graduated close to 100 PhD students, 250 master's students, and has supported over 50 research projects. The activity sponsored by the program has led to 13 startup companies in Portugal that have created so far over 800 high-tech jobs and has garnered over 100 million venture capital in international markets. Professor Mura has 16 patents issued by the US Patent and Trademark Office and has published over 550 journal and conference papers. He's a member of the US Academy of Engineers, fellow of the US National Academy of Inventors, corresponding member of the Academy of Sciences of Portugal, an IEEE fellow, and a fellow of the American Academy for the Advancement of Sciences. The president of Portugal bestowed on him the Grand Cross of the Infant de Henrique in, 19, in 2018. He is the 2019 president of the IEEE, the world's largest organization of professional engineers, with over 420,000 members in some 160 countries. Professor Moura visited Glasgow in September this year to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the first IEEE conference held in Glasgow in 1989. Interestingly, Professor Moore had attended that ICAF 89 in Glasgow and had presented three papers there, and he well remembers the location and the people he had met on that occasion. To commemorate the 30th anniversary, Glasgow Marketing Bureau has created and registered an IEEE tartan design, a completely unique design which is bound to be popular the world over with electrical and electronic engineers and IEEE members. In recognizing Professor Moura, Strathclyde would acknowledge a master inventor, a renowned ac academic, and a virtuoso engineering leader. Vice Principal, with the authority of Senate, I am pleased to present to you Professor Jose Manuel Fonseca Moura for the degree of Doctor of Science and Honoris Causa. I create you Doctor of Science and Honoris Causa. Many congratulations and welcome to the University.
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Tariq, for your very kind introduction. Coming from such an accomplished individual, your words have a, a deep significance to me. It's my great honor and privilege to be here this afternoon. I thank the University of Thrathclyde for this unique honor. Thank you, Vice Principal Scott McGregor. Before I say I continue, let me just say something about my own university. You heard I come from Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh in the US. You may recognize Carnegie as a Scotsman that in the mid 19th century immigrated to the US, Pittsburgh, where he became a major steel industrialist. Actually, if you look at history and the second uh, revol uh, industrial revolution, um, Carnegie, by his novelties and uh, his innovations, is considered one of the um, industrialists that led to that uh, second industrial revolution in the third quarter of the 19th century. He, he was the one who gave the founding gift to Carnegie Mellon. And we honor our old Scottish traditions. We are the only university in the world, and I can guarantee that because we claim that, that with a bagpiping bachelor's degree. Let me come back to, to my comments. First and foremost, today, this is your day, graduate student. My warmest congratulations to all of you, class of 2019. This is a tremendous moment for you your family, partner, friends, and for the faculty and staff here at the University of Strathclyde. We celebrate your commencement, the commencement of your next phase after you have accomplished so much in these last few years and being awarded your degree today that you so well deserve. During your time here, you learn not only the skills of engineering, but also the joy of engineering from lessons taught by the faculty in the classroom, from lessons taught through interaction with your fellow students, and from lessons taught in the laboratory of this great city of Glasgow, of which this university is a vital part. You should be very proud. Not only are you very well grounded in technology and engineering, you have excellent communication and teamwork skills, as well as a passion for lifelong learning. It is my expectation that you will become leaders in your chosen professions. Every day, we, as engineers and technologists, have the opportunity to engage in efforts to change our world for the better and improve the way that people communicate, work, travel, stay healthy, and entertain themselves. Technological innovation is the principal driver for improvements in quality of life and economic prosperity. And professions in engineering and technology are central to this innovation. Well, if you don't believe me, let me quote Einstein. So Albert Einstein, in his own words, said this, scientists investigate that which already is. Engineers create that which has never been. This is a quote that uh, I read recently at the entrance of the College of Engineering at the University of Stellenbosch, South Africa. You can do, graduates, amazing things for the world, and that is appealing to both women and men. It has been my privilege throughout my career to know and work with many brilliant and inspiring engineers and technologists, men and women who strove to apply their technical talents for a greater good. As you look ahead, let me reflect on the great times we are witnessing. We are living in a perfect storm of converging technologies, and we engineers are at the heart of things. But no one can do it alone. And I, or you, can't do it alone. Life is a partnership. 
yourself and others, family, companions, friends, cohorts, co-workers, and even your boss. Yourself, because you need to commit and give your best effort. Without your commitment, things will not happen. You can look for guidance, mentorship, but you have to engage, take risks, dare the unknown, give your best, make choices. But don't do it alone. Team up with others. Team up with others in your personal life and in your professional life. You'll find opportunities, and there will be plenty, that are most compelling and most rewarding when you recognize that it's best to find the right teammate to work with others to accomplish those opportunities. The opportunities will need different perspectives, different expertise, different talents. Embrace this diversity and you will be so much more successful. In my professional life, I have benefited immeasurably by being part of diverse professional societies. These entities, like you heard Tariq saying that uh, I, I lead the IEEE this year, create a culture of inquiry in which diverse minds can bring diverse experiences, viewpoints, and perspectives together and bring forth truly wondrous accomplishments. These international communities help to facilitate cross-disciplinary collaboration and coordination to advance the development of technologies to help improve the human condition. These professional organizations, like I mentioned IEEE, unite us, give us a sense of purpose as engineering professionals in a truly global community defined by a commitment to advance technology through our work. Get involved, volunteer, be an active participant in whatever professional or non-professional organization that makes best sense to you. My parting words, take life seriously, but with a grain of salt. Don't take yourself too seriously. Enjoy the small successes and also the large successes that you encounter, encounter as they come along. But mostly be happy. And as you commence this new stage of the rest of your life, start by patting your back. You made it. Take a moment to congratulate yourself, but realize you didn't do it alone. Others contributed to where you are today recognize and share with them the joy of your success. Congratulations again, class of 2019. Thank you, Tariq, for your kind words. Thank you, University of Strathclyde, for this honor. And thank you all for listening. Vice Principal, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Doctor of Engineering, for research in the Department of Design, Manufacture and Engineering Management, Andrew Appleby. Andrew John Campbell. For research in the Faculty of Engineering, Jason James Andrew Costello. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, for research in the Department of Design, Manufacture and Engineering Management, Nicoletta Lucia Trevisa.
Andrea Tunney. For research in the Department of Electronic and Electrical Engineering, Gabriele Amico. Marco Vanessio Chabes Baez. Go, go. <laughs> Ephraim Tersu Ayorkesi. <laughs> Iran Jin. <laughs> Jack Macalorum. For the degree of Master of Philosophy for research in the Department of Design, Manufacture and Engineering Management, Elaine Baird. <laughs> for the degree of Master of Science in Engineering Project Management, Sonny Brightwell. David Frame. <laughs> Julie O'Brien. <laughs> David O'Malley. <laughs> Yu Chien. In Mechatronics and Automation, David James Murray. <laughs> Ukba Othman. <laughs> Mohammed Salim. <laughs> Carol Paula Serrano Acuñe. Mohammed Hassan Yusuf Kalfan Al New Aimi <laughs> In Engineering Management for Process Excellence, Harit Burana Siren <laughs> Yujen Chen. Gabriele Danka. <laughs> Akmal Komban Sabu. <laughs> Aman Mishra. <laughs> Sambo Obed Garba. Krishna Shelke. Christopher Stewart. In Systems Engineering Management, Georgios Faldamas. Jitapum Impiban. Olivia Robertson. <laughs> Pat Yamglin. <laughs> In Supply Chain and Logistics Management, Kai Fan. <laughs> Huang Lian. Yang Leo. <laughs> Yi Cho Lo.
Kaushik Mohan Morali. Yu Hong Tan. Shan Wang. In Supply Chain and Procurement Management, Gianrico Siracci. Niga Willow. Janine Redlich. In Global Innovation Management, Gokul Raj Kumar. In Advanced Manufacturing, Technology and Systems, George Andrew Addison. John Deeth Sierra. Graham McElroy. Harris Akhtar Mohammed. Stelian Stefanov Nikolov. Sean Siri. Umir Syed Hussein. In Design Engineering, Chidozi Chibuki Osanachi. <laughs> Juliette Favelle. <laughs> Mario Hadjanicola. <laughs> Ryan Jerome Lee. Antonia Adiola Sinclair Miller. Christy William Van Smith. In Design Engineering with Sustainability, Juliet Felicity Farrell. In Product Design, Holly Camilla Dixon. <laughs> Weijia Tang. <laughs> In digital manufacturing, Rika Sophie Peters. <laughs> In communications, control and digital signal processing, Raymond Alexander Vessels. <laughs> In Electrical Power Engineering with Business, Adibayo Mohammed Adibola. <laughs> In Electronic and Electrical Engineering, Ami Olimi Alfred Eromoseli. Davide Biagini. <laughs> Nantia Chantont. <laughs> Jun Don. <laughs> Abdul Fatah Abdullah Sali Hussein. Chung Leo. In 5G Advanced Communications, Mohammed Al Basir Habib Allah Bakit. George Callum Foster.
Jack George. Mohammed Ibrahim. Aidan Anthony McFadden. Jordan Mason. In Wind Energy Systems, Caitlin Ann Beatty. Mihai Florin Borach. Kumar Sai Banu Chisetti. Jordan Deegan. Michael Robert Forrest. Connor Alexander McEwen. Eleni Chochopulu. In Autonomous Robotic Intelligence Systems, James Caruana. Yumin Huang. Ibrahim Mohammed. Chachawan Lakna Sopa. Rachna Yalamuri Jagadish. For the degree of Master of Engineering in Product Design Engineering, Craig Allen Joyner. Emma Shanks. In Production Engineering and Management, Fraser Samuel Haldane. In Sports Engineering, Sam McNeil. In Electronic and Electrical Engineering with Business Studies, Kerolus Nan Mancarius. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering in Product Design Engineering, David Robertson. <laughs> Magnus John Fraser. Caroline Walker. In Production Engineering and Management, Rory Wallace Bowen. Farouk Ahmed. In Electronic and Electrical Engineering, Jade McMorland. Aidan Daniel Carlin. Cameron Fleming. Stefanos Nicolau. Liam Warnock. In Electrical and Mechanical Engineering, Albaro Ruiz Garcia. For the Postgraduate Diploma in Supply Chain and Sustainability Management, Kirsty Jane Morgan.
Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, and most of all, Strathclyde University's newest graduates. It's my pleasure to once again welcome you to our graduation ceremony here in the Barony Hall. Quite rightly, our graduates have been centre stage, and I would like to begin my address by congratulating you all once again on your academic achievements. Your hard work has paid off, and this has now been recognised in front of your families, friends, and the staff who taught and supported you during your time at the university. And under the lights of this magnificent venue, we celebrate your efforts and your achievements. Very well done indeed. Now, in a short while, at the close of graduation, you may be asked to join the academic procession as this leaves the Barony Hall. This invitation actually symbolises the fact that you're no longer students, but now full members of the academic community of Strathclyde, a community that numbers over 180,000 individuals. The class of 2019 is graduating at a time of considerable change in Scotland, in the UK, and internationally, and there is no doubt that challenges lie ahead for us all. However, as members of the Strathclyde family, you belong to a large, growing, worldwide community with a shared ethos of tolerance and understanding and a desire to make a positive difference. I hope that the memory of today is something that will stay with you wherever you go and whatever you choose to do in life. We will keep in touch with you through our alumni team, and I would also ask that you keep in touch with us. Let us know what you're up to, what you think about what we are doing at the university, and what you could do to help future generations of students. As graduates of a socially progressive university, you have a competitive advantage, having been equipped with the skills, know-how, and capacity to absorb knowledge together with the ability to positively influence and shape the world around you. In Scotland, we are fortunate in having a higher education system, which is internationally respected, and as a society, we are quite right to invest in it. Education broadens the mind, and it creates opportunities for individuals and for society. The opportunities that education gives each of us also carries with it a responsibility to use what we have learned wisely and for the good of others. A sense of duty should come readily to graduates of this university. As Strathclyders, we only have to look to the achievement of those who have gone before us for our inspiration. To John Anderson, our founder, who established this university for the good of mankind. To the world's first oil man, James Paraffin Young. To the missionary and explorer, David Livingstone. To John Logie Baird, who did such pioneering work on the development of television. In the present day, we look to Dame Ailish Angelini, a pioneer in Scottish justice, as the country's first female Solicitor General, and later the first female Lord Advocate. And to Sir Tom Hunter, one of the most successful entrepreneurs in Scottish history, a philanthropist who uses his wealth for the benefit of others. Now, I'm sure that you've been given lots of advice on how best to plan your life. Some of this advice you will rightly ignore, some you may accept, but mostly you will have to learn for yourself. The Scottish author, Robert Louis Stevenson, put it well when he said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. Now to reach this point in your life today, each of you will have traveled a different journey. For some, the path will have been relatively smooth, and for others, it may have been more challenging. However, I am certain of one thing, that none of you would be here without the active support of your family and friends. They have picked you up when you've been down, they have encouraged you when you've needed it. And many will be here today proudly watching as you cross this stage with broad smiles and the odd tear in the eye. Now they are celebrating today, not just because you're almost off the payroll, although there is something in that, but because you carry with you their hopes, their wishes, and confidence for a successful career. 
For the past half hour or so, their applause has rung in your ears as you each in turn cross the stage to receive your award. I would now like to invite all of our graduates to show their appreciation for the support received from their family and friends. I touched earlier on some of the key figures who have helped to create and shape the University of Strathclyde. And you can tell a lot about the values of an organisation by looking at its roots. Strathclyde traces its lineage back to 1796 when Anderson brought it into being, the only Scottish university founded during the Age of Enlightenment and embodying the Enlightenment principles of reason, tolerance and equality. Anderson's belief in useful learning and his commitment to taking knowledge and using this for the greater good is a motivating force which gives Strathclyde University its momentum today. In many ways, our founder, John Anderson, was ahead of his time as he advocated in the 18th century the education of both women and men of all classes. This vision is just as important today and as a socially progressive university, we want the talents of our students to be developed to the highest level for the benefit of society. This can be seen in our pioneering law clinic where our students provide support and representation to people who cannot afford legal advice. It can also be seen in our technology and innovation centre which is transforming the way in which we collaborate with business, industry and the public sector to bring global competitive advantage to Scotland. And this is a tangible sign of the university's commitment to world-class research and ensuring that outcomes have a maximum benefit to society and to the economy. We are a university for innovation, seeking breakthroughs which will address the most pressing challenges facing the world through new and effective medicines, meaningful approaches to climate change, new technologies to address energy poverty and food poverty, by informing policy that addresses public need and makes for a vibrant and fair society, and by offering much needed independent insight into complex political, economic and social issues. And these represent a small sample of the many contributions being led by our world-class staff and students in taking new knowledge and using it to solve problems in industry, in the classroom and in the boardroom. And we continually strive to enhance the student experience and invest in our campus, creating facilities like our £31 million Strathclyde Sports Building to support fitness, health and well-being, our new £20 million District Energy Network, which is reducing our carbon footprint, and we are investing over £60 million in a new teaching and learning facility in the heart of the campus. Other highlights over the last year have included the Faculties Engineering Academy being named Partnership of the Year and the Scottish Qualifications Authority Star Awards, which celebrate excellence in education and training. The Faculties Scottish Space School won the Innovation in STEM Training Award at the Global Game Changer Awards for supporting early career opportunities in engineering, science and technology. Professor Keith Bell of Electronic and Electrical Engineering has been appointed to the UK Committee on Climate Change. Our Principal and Vice-Chancellor, Professor Sir Jim McDonald, who studied electronic and electrical engineering in Strathclyde University, has been appointed the President of the Royal Academy of Engineering, the first Scot to hold this post. Electronic and electrical engineering students have installed a solar-powered energy system in Kumbijay Village School in the Gambia. This is the 12th off-grid solar power installation as part of the Gambia Solar Project since 2006, which is helping to improve the educational experience of over 5,500 school children in the Gambia. And Design, Manufacture and Engineering Management's advanced forming research sector is benefiting from UK government investment of £96 million as part of the high value manufacturing catapult to translate innovative manufacturing technologies into commercial reality. 
Now, these are just some of the many contributions being made by your staff and students. And Strathclyde has been increasingly recognised as a place where things happen, and this is why our graduates are so highly prized by companies and organisations looking to recruit the best talent to drive their businesses forward. Our success is in no small part due to the collective efforts, talent and commitment of our staff, the 3,900 colleagues who deliver our vision as a leading international technological university. And like me, they are very proud of your achievements. All of our students learn how to be innovative, enterprising and creative and to make a real difference when they go out into the workplace. So wherever your career takes you, always remember that as a Strathclyde graduate, useful learning carries with it responsibilities that go beyond academic scholarship. And finally, let me offer my sincerest congratulations to you all once again on your achievements, and I hope that you enjoy the remainder of what is a very special day. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that now concludes the formal part of this afternoon's proceedings, which I hope you've enjoyed and that you'll take away very many happy memories. Uh, we do have a reception in our nearby Ward Todd building to which everyone is invited to come along for some receptions, uh, receptions, refreshments after the ceremony. I've been given the thumbs up at the back of the hall, which means that the weather has stayed good enough for us to have an academic procession. So the congregation will lead out, followed by our new graduates. And thereafter, ladies and gentlemen, if you could wait till we passed and then follow us immediately over to the Lord Todd, we shall see you there for some refreshments. I now formally declare that this congregation for the conferment of degrees is closed. <laughs>